56 years ago, Russia, the northern Ural Mountains. A group of nine students of the Ural Polytechnic Institute embarked upon a difficult winter expedition to reach the Ototen Mountain. Oh, winter, yeah! Their journey seemed to progress according to plan. However, on the seventh day of their trip, the weather conditions worsened. They lost their orientation and were forced to set up a camp on the slope of the mountain called Kolat Siakl. It was their last stop. Three weeks later in Yekaterinburg, when their families received no word of their success, the first rescue expeditions were sent. On February 25th, 1959, an abandoned encampment was found. The tent was torn down and covered with snow, with all the group's belongings left inside. Further examination revealed it was cut from inside out. The surrounding footprints indicated the crew had fled the tent. They were barefooted. This suggests a frantic escape, characteristic of people scared out of their wits. Two sets of prints led to a forested area down the slope. The rescue team found an improvised fireplace and two bodies. They were lying in but their underwear, with cuts and scratches to their limbs, suggesting they had tried to climb the tree in panic. What could terrify them so much? The next three bodies were found scattered a few hundred meters from the first discovery. One of them had suffered a fractured skull, this despite no evidence of a struggle. It took the spring thaw, two months later, to enable the rescue team to find the rest of the victims. The last four skiers were found buried in a thick layer of ice and snow. Their autopsies led to even more bizarre findings. All of the bodies had severe internal injuries caused by an undetermined force, similar to that of a serious car accident. No external damage nor bruises were visible, besides a tongue ripped from one victim's mouth and a strange orange skin color. Much speculation arose from these puzzling events. Such theories included attack from the local tribesmen, from an avalanche or animals. Each theory, however, only served to create more questions. The truth behind this tragic course of events remains unexplained to this day. What really happened? Maybe the answer still waits to be discovered deep under the snow. This is Kai, this is Vinta, this is me! And this is some photo spiel. Naja, gucken wir mal. Wie geht's nicht weiter? Aus der Puste. Jetzt hört die schöne Musik auf. Warum?
it in here. Da geht's nicht lang. Schon verlaufen. saw was a flash, an insufferable burning light, the pain ripping apart my body. I felt it tearing out of my soul. After a while, I was nobody, nothing. The light went out and I vanished into overwhelming darkness. I welcomed the end with delight. Hm, jetzt haben wir wieder ein Ladebild schon. Oh, das ist der erste Akten zu hold on to your humanity, when others convince you of being no more than a subject, an object, which they can bend to their will. When they told you that you were a monster that deserved punishment, when you could really not remember your sins, when they took away your loved ones, leaving you to rot in the dark. The problem is, that in their darkness, you have never been alone. Then Gamer mal diesen Leuchtenfuß abdrücken hinterher. Ich 
Also wir dürfen uns nicht überanstrengen. Also nicht zu schnell rennen. Okay, okay, okay. Das sind keine Pinguine. I set out the moment I heard about the incident. I was in the area, so I reported to the unit myself to be automatically assigned to the case. I arrived at Vichai on February the 19th, a couple of days before the Institute's rescue group. While waiting for them, I started asking around to see if anyone from among the locals knew anything about the incident. One of them said he had a hunting cabin in the search region and knew the area very well. I decided to use him as a guide. When the rescue team had finally arrived, I explained to them what the unit's role was in this mission and that all discoveries or observations should be brought to my attention before anyone else's. We established priorities, checked the equipment and set off right away. It was not until February the 26th we found the tent that I believe belonged to the students. Initial findings show that the people in the tent cut its side wall and for some reason tried to escape from it in panic. The tracks in the snow led to a forest a kilometer and a half away. But the trail went cold after 500 meters and we had to carefully search the entire area. This was not a place of any average incident. We had shivers crawling all over our bodies because of the atmosphere surrounding us. I was convinced that something more than just an accident had occurred here. I had the feeling we were dealing with something unnatural. Es wird aber dunkel. Das mag ich nicht. Ah, was geht da? Geh 
Schlüssel zu den Osterinseln? Was machst du hier aber? Und da sind Wölfe. So gehe ich jetzt eigentlich hoch. Ich dachte, ich muss da irgendwo. Äh, was ist das? Zuerst ist eine geschlossene Stadt in der Oblast Tomsk, Russland. 15 Kilometer nordwestlich von Tomsk am rechten Ufer der Tom gelegen. Sie befindet sich in den Händen von Rosatom, Russlands föderale Agentur für Atomenergie. Die Stadt wurde 1940 gegründet und trug früher den Namen Piatti Pochtavi, Piatti Pochtavi, Postfach Nummer 5. Äh, 1956 erhielt der Ort das Stadtrecht. Die Stadt verfügt über mehrere äh, Kernreaktoren und Chemiewerke zur Trennung, Anreicherung und Wiederaufbereitung von Uran und Plutonium. Oh, da strahlt's. Sitz der russischen Forschungseinheit für Naturphänomene bis 1991, sowjetische Forschungseinheit. Die Einheit konzentriert sich auf die Erforschung von Naturkatastrophen in Russland. Ja. Das spreche ich aber nicht runter.
aber hier war ich doch schon. Dieses Ding rumgetrunken. Da will ich nicht runterfallen. Nein. Nein, nein. Gibt es hier keine Brücke? Zurück. Ich habe mich verlaufen. Aber so richtig.